Hello, okay, this is part three of the TMJ Pain Away program. Okay, Sherry, let's see, we did, you did part one, you, you, you watched the video, what was your response to that? Practice the technique. You practice the technique, and? Yeah, it made a difference, it's made a difference, it's okay. making a difference. Okay, is it, are you seeing less headaches? Yes. Okay, are you catching yourself clenching? Yes, I am. You are still, okay. Is it becoming less frequent or staying the same? No, I think now it's starting to become less frequent. Okay, good, okay. Now, the last time we reviewed part two, which is stress reduction, okay? The idea was the notebook, you put down your long-term lifetime goals, go in five pages, put down your short-term goals, the ones you're gonna accomplish in the next six months, go in five pages and you put down your problem list and you list all of your issues, then you go in five pages and you write problem number one, you come up with 10 possible answers, and when you come up with your 10 answers, you circle one, two, three, or all of them, and then you turn the book over, and on the last page of the book is solution slash to-do list, and on there, you write down your answers. Then you go back, problem two, write down your answers, problem three, write down your answers, and you repeat it until you come up with solutions to, to all the answers, and then in the end, you're gonna take that to-do list and you're gonna take it with you and every day you're gonna start tackling it. And as you tackle it, things are gonna go away. And as the things go away, your stress levels come down. So the point of doing the notebook is getting yourself organized so you can reduce your stressors that are within your control, okay? So what did you think of the notebook so far? Well, I just started it. Uh, one of the things I'm focusing on right now is uh, being more organized around the house. Okay. Um, you would think being at home I would be organized, but I'm not, so it's helping. You're not alone. I'm focusing on it, and, it, and for me, one thing at a time, and uh, I, I think it's a good uh, exercise practice. Good. I think everybody should. Yeah, and, and what you just said is really important, and the reason is one thing at a time. You can't get everything done instantaneously. Some people, they might be able to. You have a list, you may be able to get everything done in a day. But, you know, tackle the important items first, do it step by step, and it'll happen, okay? You know, my garden became overgrown with weeds. I had a choice, I could go out and spend an entire day and weed it, and I probably wouldn't get it done. And if I did that, I would be dead the next day. I couldn't move, okay? So, I said, okay, I let it go, it's my fault, I should have been doing a little bit at a time. So I went out and I spent an hour weeding. And at the hour it was over, I went in, I enjoyed the hour. The next day I did another hour. A few days later I did another hour. A few days later I did another hour. And guess what, at the end of the week, my garden was normal, okay? So I didn't have to kill myself, I took it one day at a time. Okay, any, any, how far along did you get? Did you get to the, the solution list yet? Uh, for this one particular item, yeah, um, I've got some ideas, so I'm working on that. Okay, so you work through one issue right all the way to the end. Mm -hmm. Did it make a logical sense? Oh, yeah. Okay, good. And were you able to come up with answers that work for you? Yes. Good, okay. Now, we tend to avoid the things that we don't want to deal with and call it procrastination. So, you know, what are the solutions to procrastination? That, you know, that's a kind of a tough one when you think about it. Uh, I'm a procrastinator. Now, compared to other people, I may not look like a procrastinator. I get a lot done, okay? But, you know, sometimes procrastination can be broken down into multiple different areas. Like, you don't do it because you don't want to do it. In my case, I do the things I want to do first, like look at my email, which may not really be that important when I should be doing my paperwork first. So, you know, you definitely want to prioritize whenever you can, okay? so. What are some of the things that you can look at doing? When you get stuck with a particular problem, okay, you ask the bartender, which means you ask a friend, you ask somebody that is totally objective, somebody that doesn't know you at all, and you'd be amazed at some of the answers that come up, and when they give you an answer, write it down. I don't say do it, but write it down, because the next day you get to look at it. The beauty of the book is you can look at it every day for a few minutes, and new answers will come up. Sometimes, in my case, I wake up in the middle of the night and I said, that's the answer, right? And if the notebook is nearby, I write it down. If I don't write it down, you know, sometimes by the time I wake up, I forget about it, okay? Number two, it's not within my control, accept it, okay?
you know, if, if you always wanted to live in Antarctica, you know, you could write down ten possible ways to get there. And on the other hand, if it's not going to happen, you say, look, it's not with my control. You know, I need to accept that I live here in America. Okay? Doesn't mean I have to give up the desire to go to Antarctica. I could plan that. So the Antarctica could be, you know, save enough money so I can go on a cruise to Antarctica. Okay? You know, sell off sell everything that I own so I can move to Antarctica. Okay? Talk to my friends and see if anybody wants to go with me. I mean, the list goes on and on. But sometimes our desires aren't within our control, and Antarctica is not the place that anybody would think of really going. So, you know, maybe it's just, let's just do a vacation there. Meanwhile, let's concentrate on a living. Accept that you have what you have, okay? And if it's not within your control to make that change at the moment, go back and accept it. Sometimes you can say it's in God's control. It's in God's hands, okay? You have somebody that's dying in your family. It happens. I mean, it's an awful, awful thing. Now, you can stretch yourself out. You can stump your feet. Or you can say, okay, what can I do? I can look up everything on the Internet regarding his condition and see if there's something that we can do to help him. Okay? That's good. I can get him a nurse to come into the house to take care of him. That's good. I can go and be there with him, make him comfortable. That's good. Okay? Four, I can ignore him. Well, if it's stressing you out to the point that every time you go, it's, it's killing you, sometimes ignoring is the way to go, even though it may sound like it's not. Next is, it's not within my control. It's, it's up to God. Next is, he's in good hands. He has his doctors. He has the people that take care of him. Trust that they'll do the best that they can do. And now it takes the pressure off of you. Okay? Often we blame ourselves for the problem, and therefore we're feeling guilty. Well, more often than not, we have a piece of it, but you need to let yourself go. For parents, you have children, they're on their own, sometimes just letting them go will get rid of your stress. You can worry about your child every day, what good does that do? Or you can be there, just like we said, support them emotionally, support them financially, help give them direction, but let it go. It's, it, it's in their hands. It's in their control, not yours. Okay? So keep working the notebook. Take it one day at a time. You don't have to complete it in a day. And you're going to find that one or two problems disappear when you do it. And next thing you know, you're writing them all down. You're coming up with answers. And your life starts to really move. And it moves in a positive way. And the most important one is that you just feel good and you feel comfortable. You find a serenity, a peace of mind for yourself. Okay? TMJ patients are type A driven personalities. They never relax. Okay? And that is one of the problems to be put on the list. I can't relax. The answers will come and the last one that I give you is when in doubt, pray. Okay? Pray to your God, your higher power, and you'd be amazed at how that can give solace and peace of mind. Okay? At the same time, if you're religious and you, you go to a church, a mosque, a synagogue, go and talk with your, your priest, your rabbi, your imam. They are there to help you. And they don't charge you. Okay? Now, if you can't resolve the issues, by all means, counseling is great. Counseling comes in a lot of forms. But sometimes the best counseling is just having a good group of friends. And the most important part, if you're with a good group of friends and you're there to try to let off the steam, let them know. You need to let off the steam. Can they, can they just hear you out? And that way you can get it out. Okay? At the same time, when they talk, listen. So listen to learn, learn to listen. Or you can learn to listen and then listen to learn. It works either way. But, but if you start listening, you'll start hearing and seeing solutions, okay? Right now, the stress reduction part will reduce the clenching. Doing the technique, tap, 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 relax the jaw, relax, no more clenching, no more pain. Relax the jaw, relax, no more clenching, no more pain. Doing it repetitively, 
three times a day, that's 30 times a day you're telling yourself to relax, no more clenching, no more pain. And when you catch yourself clenching, do the technique again. Now, one more. If you catch yourself clenching and the muscles are really, really tight, there's a very simple exercise that you can do to relax the muscles. Because once they're in spasm, sometimes it's real difficult to get rid of it. The exercise is using your body's reflexes to relax the muscle. So if I open my mouth, there's a muscle in the back of the muscle, the mouth called the pterygoid that opens it. It's very tiny, very small, very weak. Okay? If I close the mouth, you have the masseter, the buccinator, they're really strong muscles. They're the ones that are in spasm. So if I put my finger under my jaw and isometrically open against resistance, I'll relax the muscles that close the jaw. So isometric means no motion. Open and relax. Open one, two, three, relax. Now the pressure I'm putting up is the same pressure you put over your eyeball. It's very light. If you push hard and you go hard, you're going to irritate the jaw. So you, it's just very gently opening against resistance, but there's no real motion. Do that 10 times, then go back and you'll find it relaxes the muscles. So an analogy is if, if I want to relax my triceps that are in spasm in the back of my arm, I would contract my biceps. As the biceps contract, a, a reflex goes up and it relaxes the opposing muscles. So as I open the jaw, the muscle that opens it tells the muscles that close it to relax so it can open. And when you repeat it, the muscles unlock. Okay? One more example. You take an alligator, it has thousands of pounds of pressure closing, but they say you can keep its mouth closed with your two fingers because opening is very weak. Well, we're the same way. Opening is very weak. Gravity works on it. Okay? If you open hard, you'll irritate. Okay? So when you find yourself clenching and you find there's spasm and it doesn't go away, open one, two, three, relax. Open one, two, three, relax. And do that ten times. You know what else I do? Um, a lot of times I do that when I'm driving traffic. Uh, the clenching, you know, I can feel it start to come on. Mm -hmm. Turn on the radio and sing, sing something. I'll, or put a CD in or something that I like to hear. Absolutely. You're just singing. When you're moving your mouth, it's just... As soon as you start moving the mouth, the mouth, the rigid. muscles relax. You look, a lot of people, they chew gum. They chew gum all day long. You might not want to hear me sing, but yeah. it works. <laughs> yeah, chewing gum is okay, but if, if your jaw is irritated and you're chewing a lot, that can irritate you. So do exactly what you did, but beforehand, tap, 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 relax the jaw, relax, no more clenching, no more pain, open one to three. You can do it at one red light, and it works, and you'll find it'll stop. Do you find you're able to stop yourself from clenching now? A lot. Yeah. A lot. Okay. I would say 95% of the time. 95% of the time. Good. And in the beginning, you couldn't do it at all, and right? 5% is when I wake up in the middle of the night, I feel it, and I would wake up and I right away go into the technique. So. Okay. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay. So the next exercise is to continue the notebook. Every day you learn something new. Take it one day at a time. Listen to learn. Learn to listen. And allow yourself to start enjoying life. The answers will come. You're going to come up with your own answers. That's the beauty of the notebook. Ask your friends. Ask your rabbi, priest, or imam. Accept it as it's not within your control. Very powerful. The more you do it, the better you get at it. And all of a sudden, you're not stressing out over the little stuff. And that's the last item. When you find out that you're stressing yourself out over the little stuff, say, don't stress over the little stuff. Just let it go and you'll get really good at letting it go. Do the tap, tap technique three times a day, morning, afternoon, evening, 10 times each. Do the technique when you catch yourself clenching and continue it for two months. At that point, you've broken the habit. There's no longer the habit of clenching. You're finding out now it's been almost two weeks, you still catch yourself clenching. Now, everybody's different, most people, you know, by the time they hit that one week, it's like it becomes rare to clench. All it means is that it's more ingrained with you. It's going to take a little bit longer. Accept that. Move forward. Keep going. How's your neck feeling now? It's getting there. It's better. Okay. It's better. How would you rate it on a scale of 1 to 10? Uh, today, maybe 2. Maybe 2. And and 2 weeks ago, it was a, an 8, 9, 10 for, uh, for months. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So this actually is a huge change. 
remember those changes, acknowledge it, feel good, like, you know what, I'm not getting the neck pain anymore, I'm not getting the morning headaches anymore, and I have more energy, and I'm doing these exercises, and I'm getting rid of this stress, and I'm feeling better about myself, and life is looking better, and life is good, it's whatever you choose for it to be. So let's choose to go out there and enjoy ourselves. Thank you till part three B.